everybody and welcome back to my painting channel. My name is Paul Apps and today I'm going to be doing another watercolour for you. It's actually the one that's behind me on the easel and it's a small stretch of sand or called Sunny Sands actually. It's in Folkestone right next to the harbour at Folkestone on the Kent coast. It's a lovely spot during the summertime especially and the painting looks towards the Dover harbour in the very far distance. So join me now, let's jump right into this painting and I hope you enjoy it, I'm sure you will, and if you do get something from it, at the end, maybe you'd be so kind as to put a like on the video, and moreover, if you feel so inclined, put a comment too, that would be great, I'll answer them all, and uh, if you're not already a subscriber, then maybe you'll consider just pressing that subscribe button, uh, it helps me to know that my audience is growing, and it also tells me that people are really enjoying the content that I'm putting out. And in the meantime, enjoy the painting, uh, and I'll catch you all on the very next video. So, happy painting, all the best for now. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is going to be a landscape that is not too far from me. It's a place called Sunny Sands. Uh, near Folkestone, well it is Folkestone, and it looks towards the headlands of uh, Dover. So I'm going to start by doing a low horizon, well, sort of not quite middle, somewhere around there, maybe as a horizon line. Try and get it as straight as you can, it's just simply an idea. And then I'm going to put in uh, some minimal drawing, just the um, sort of foreground, uh, in terms of the um, structures, the, the cliff rises up out of that, so we're going to put that in quite early on, set that up. And then this man-made item, I'm not quite sure what this is, I would love to find out, I'm sure there's somebody out there who can tell me and run that through there. I don't know whether it was part of a, uh, an old pier or an old pump or an old dock, but they're also some sort of structure. It looks like a pillbox. I must get out there one day and have a look and see what that is. But it looks like that is all sorted out and that just disappears down into the sea here. Now this is not the actual horizon level. I'm just going to put that through there and let the uh, the bay as it is comes round with a lot of chalk and that comes round like that and what we've got is the sea that comes across in a sort of an arc like so as it comes down past me. I could actually bring it, the photograph shows it about there but I'm going to bring it down through here and that gives me a nice bit of wet beach on the top here and some reflections from any of this up here. So for the rest of it, it's in darkness. Now I've got to look carefully at the drawing there and bring that cliff come on down and it's little kink in it and it just goes over the top of that structure which isolates that nicely and it comes down and it all ends just before this pillbox. So I've got to bear that in mind. And it's disappearing, so although that looks high, you can't have it so high that it wouldn't, it looks out of proportion. So I think that we'll probably just get away with that. Like so. And then of course you've got a slightly different horizon level where the sea will be seen above this first section. And then you've got the uh, area which would be the Dover Harbour Wall. And I think that's called Western Docks. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure. So there we go. Now that pretty much is the only drawing we need to really do. Uh, you know, the rest of it, the water and everything else will be made up uh, as we go. There's no structure to it. It's quite a stormy day. Although I could actually change this to a more structured sky and clouds, which could be more pleasing. So I actually might do that, um, we'll see, we'll uh, 
have a look at it shortly and continue on from there. Okay, I'm just going to start getting ready to do some colour. But I quite like the idea of doing the stormy sky now, so I'm going to run with that and I'm going to put quite a lot of cobalt blue down, which would be my normal sort of sky colour, blue sky colour, but I'm going to use that as a base. Then I'm going to add just a touch of indigo into that, which gives it that deeper, darker, more menacing look, but I don't want it too dark at this stage and just a very minute amount of cadmium red or vermilion in my case. There's quite a bit on there and what I'm going to do is just work on bringing that through. Now what I forgot to say was that this paper is um, 300 pounds and not 300 GSM. So it's 300 pounds in weight and makes it very very thick and uh, very absorbent for the water. Now I don't want to come in on that cliff so I'm going to work around the edge of that. I could if I wanted to come down all the way through this secondary cliff but there's really no need. It's just more work and waste of paint and time. So just work around that and bring that on down the edge of the cliff there and take that away. I don't want to lose that pillbox. I don't want that to be in any way interfered with in terms of the colour because it's a cool colour that I'm putting in and I don't want that to change. So I'm going to use that, take that off. Now it doesn't matter that I've done what I've done here because the paper is really nice and wet and we'll take it and we'll rework it. There. Just take all the excess. I don't want this running down so I'm just going to take off and run a damp brush around the edge of that. Paint will still form in that crack and eddy, but it doesn't matter. I just don't want it too dark because I want the darker unsunlit hills, if that's the right way of putting it, to show up a lot more. So I'm just taking off and taking off until I'm happy that that is where I want it to be. Take off there. Now that doesn't matter too much because of course I've got what will be the um, Dover Harbour wall going in there and I've actually come through a little bit where the uh, sea is going to end up so I'm not too worried about that either. Just keep working on this till I'm happy with it. There we go, it's starting to to lessen so the effect will be somewhere where I want it to be. I'm going to let that uh, settle for a second or two and um, while I'm doing that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to carry on down here with some of this sea. The wash is still there so I just need to protect this little bit of land mass through here and I want the same, pretty much the same colours. So it's going to be the indigo with some blue Take it to one side, then I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna to that mix, but I don't want it too strong. So I'm going to bring it through here, protecting that little jetty of land, well, nearly anyway. There we go, that will, should be alright. And let that, that come through as the sea. Maybe should have mixed up a little bit more, but it's not the end of the world. There we are. And a bit more blue as we come round into the bay, which reflects more of the sky above. The brush I'm using is a medium-sized squirrel mop. Just watch that. 
The Squirrel Mop is a really lovely brush for washes, but it hasn't got the stability in the hair. But for holding structure, it does become a little more flimsy uh, in that regard. So you do have to be aware of that, that maybe if you want that structure retained in the brush when you're using it, you might need to choose maybe a thicker round brush that has a little bit more support in the, than the squirrel hair actually does. Okay, so that I can quite happily leave for the moment. I might just, while I'm at it, um, maybe sort of break a few bits out where the uh, waves will come through. A bit more blue, a bit more sienna, a bit more indigo, not too much. Don't want to overdo it. But I just want to suggest that um, there are sort of broken bits of wave coming in. And take that all the way through to the edge. And what I will do, as I've got this here now, because I've suggested the wave and the white water that's uh, frothing and foaming at the edge there. So we're going to go for ultramarine, keeping it pure, and a little bit of magenta, as I said. Gives me that lovely violet and deeper blue, and I'm going to bring that into what will be the sand. Maybe a little bit more blue. But I'm trying to leave some edges here, so I'm going to be leaving suggestive areas that could be that um, reflections and of the cliff on that side there. I'm going to take that through there. And this is meant to represent the wetter side of the water on the beach. And bring that all the way down through there like so. Just take any ex off, excess off that you don't want to put in there. And I'm going to drop in a little bit of pure raw sienna into that area there and into this one here, which just suggests the reflections in the sand and the wet sand of that tower before it hits the brush before it hits the uh, dry sand. I think that's probably just all it needs. It doesn't need a lot. There. Okay. Now, while I'm there, I'm going to come back in then and do some raw sienna. And just a touch, actually, of uh, Indian red into that. Just to suggest the lead edge of that sand, which is damp but not totally wet whereas this is the uh, water that's been running up and over the beach so again raw sienna Indian red and just put some of that on like so there's quite a bit actually I've forgotten to put in here this is the uh, bit more of the sienna into that edge is the reflection in the sand or in the wetness of the sand which would be a cliff on this part here. So I'm just going to go back in and put some, this time some ultramarine and violet. And run that through there and there. And along that lead edge through there. Okay. Not quite sure where that's going to go, but it's not a big deal. It's just nice to see the the flow of water and colour. Right now while I've got this here before it does dry up on me I'm going to go back to pure um, raw sienna and just run that colour in strongly as to the sand and let that do its own thing and that will finish off that little corner I hope I might just run it through there just to suggest that it does go round. Okay, I'm going to let that settle down. Taking off any excess, of course, on the bottom. I 
Okay, so I'm going to come back when this is pretty much dried up here, but in the meantime I just want to suggest some more for that sky. And I'm going to add some more indigo, quite a lot of it, but I'm going to make two piles of it. And I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red, or in my case vermilion, so one's quite orangey, but I'm then going to be putting in some blue into that mix. So we've got several little troughs of colour here that are made up, and I'm going to be suggesting the heavier cloud that's coming halfway down. And I'm going to start at the top. Don't want to overdo it. I could actually add more layers as I wish to later. But I want to suggest that there are heavier uh, stormy clouds that are overhead and affecting the lights. And now that comes down and that actually reinforces the light of this um, area here. But I don't want to come any lower, so I'm going to lose that off there and just suggest that it's a bit darker but I don't want to go too dark because this is going to be dark and I don't want I want it to stand out I don't want it to be lost so I've got to bear that in mind a bit more blue a little bit more cobalt as well, uh, cobalt and uh, ultramarine violet a touch of the uh, indigo and a little bit of the red too and just go back in in places where I want to suggest that it is a mightier cloud than first thought, maybe. I'm going to drag some of those heavier marks out and down. Damper brush. Pick up a little bit of colour, not too much. Let that run through. So it's got structure and it's got the form that you need it to do to look like a cloud, but it's not playing a great deal of part other than supporting this heaviest mass up the top. Don't worry about the white paper. It's there, it's random. I didn't design it to be exactly where it is. If it missed or skipped, that's partly the reason why I'm using uh, or a good reason why I'm using um, this type of paper, this heavy grade paper, because the rough is just allows the brush when it's slightly dry with mix to skip over the top. Just again observe that you don't leave too much heavy paint running down in the bottom here. Let that run down to what will be the new horizon. That's it. Now, you can either add some more into here if you wish to. I might just put a slightly heavier band of colour, a little bit of the uh, magenta, in with the indigo this time, and no blue as such, and just gently tap in and let that rest and end up where it wants to go. Suggestive a little bit more weight on the clouds almost on top of us as they're coming over and that could give rise to uh, the shade and shadow that is on the cliffs below. Now although it looks quite dark at the moment it did there just a minute ago and you saw that that too has dissipated and blended with all the other colours around. So bear in mind it's going to do that if you got it too wet but nothing's too wet unless you want to do something else with it. So it's really wet by design or wet by mistake, depending. Most mistakes, if you, unless you're really unlucky, can be turned into something quite positive. So never despair too much. I'm just going to lose some of this other marks. A little bit of indigo and uh, a bit of the red, a little bit of the 
ultramarine violet too, not too much, not too strong a mix going on. Just going to drop in a bit of dark up the top here. Now that is a little too strong in my book, so I'm going to lift some of that back. And I'm going to tap a little bit more magenta to that mix as well. That's not so bad now. Just one more dark area there. I'm going to be careful again. I don't go too mad with that magenta. It's a very, very strong pigment. I'm adding a little bit of Venetian red too, as opposed to the um, vermilion. Okay, you can go too far, and I think if I do any more, I'm going to be in danger of going too far. I want to lose that there. I'm just going to, while the paper's down, take that off. And that gives me a lovely, solid, heavy top to that cloud. All right, I'm going to leave it there for the moment, and I'm going to come back in a short while when this is pretty much dried up. Uh, it's been a little while, though, seeing this to dry off, and um, I'm now going to carry on, and I'm going to put in uh, the hillside here, or cliff, but it's a very pale one, so I'm going to use some um, little bit of raw sienna to give the base colour to the cliff. doesn't need to be a big wash, just a small colour, almost white in some ways. That can come down into here, it's not a big deal. There's a little bit of blue in my brush, it's not a problem either, because it is quite cool. and just bring that on down. Actually, I've gone past that part. That's the darker part, but it doesn't really matter. What I do want to do, though, is to give this column a significant uh, color and let that drain through and run that all the way down to the shoreline and the pillbox, if that's indeed what it is. I think that's what it is and let that run along there, like so. I want to lift it a bit. Because it's quite white, so it's very, very pale. Don't worry about the over-painting here on this, because you're going to put a little bit of dark rock through there, so it's not a big deal. Just run that line there. It'll be an undercoat to the darks that I do put in that area. And I'm just going to leave that shoreline pretty much a very, very pale tint. So put it in and let it run, but nothing more than that. It doesn't need any more than that. I don't want to get it too white, but I don't want it um, too dark either. So I'm going to leave that like that and let this settle down. But before I go any further now, I want to put a bit more on the sea. So I'm going to come back in, and this time I'm I am going to use a smaller brush. And the reason being that I don't I want a little bit more. Remember what I was saying about the how flexible this squirrel hair is. It hasn't got the support in the bristle, whereas this um, sable has. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to mix up a little bit of the blues and the indigo, but I'm going to put quite a bit of the um, raw sienna into that. And I'm going to come along the top of the sea, and it's just a nice little line, just to suggest where the top of the horizon is. And I'm going to break that line out. So what I'm going to do is put a damp brush along and let the water just break it out of the bottom so that it's not just one line, but it actually does a bit more water. Let it break out through. Just softens the underlying part into the sea, and then I can just take anything off that I don't want. There we go. 
And while I'm doing that, I may as well go in with some indigo this time and a bit of the magenta into that. Not much. But I'm going to put in what would be the Dover Harbour all the way through to about there. A little bit more. Actually, I'm going to put some Indian red into that. More indigo, a bit of Indian red. And let that go back in along there. There's a structure. And I'm going to use a very similar colour now. I'm going into this back of this hill. I've got to be careful and check that this is quite dry before I do that. So I'm just going to be a little careful and leave that, but work on some of the uh, red into the rather too much the red and indigo together probably you know, makes a really nice dark there are many other combinations out there but this one makes a nice dark I'm just going to suggest the line of rocks that run off the end of this I'm put a little bit more I'll put a bit of umber into that to make it slightly browner and just run it along this shoreline tapping it every so often a bit more amber as well actually I'm going to bring that into there at the same time that's still nice and damp so we can get away with that it will dry a lot lighter than it shows as all these colours are, but at the same time I can go back in and play around with that a little more. A bit of dry brush just up to the edge of that pillbox. Take that back a little bit and come back into the shoreline again. Tap a few marks up into the rocks. This goes quite a long way out into the sea and obviously is showing up a lot more when the tide is low and this is starting to get to a, a low point of tide. Now what I've done is I've just dampened off the brush and I'm going in to ease off again just to soften some of these marks against the sea so they get a little bit of a soft bleed it's not such a harsh edge there you go, I think that works just a bit more, actually I'm going to put a little bit more depth into some of these colours here I think they will work Touch more indigo to that. Quite a bit more amber and a bit more indigo, which makes a much darker dark. I'm just going to put that in one or two places, not overall. I don't want to. I don't want to replace one with the other. So. I'm just going to be a little sparing how many times I tap that into the mix. It gives a variation to the dark as well. I've got to put a bit of information in here, but I need to leave that quite light for the moment. And with that, I'm just going to put in a little bit of sienna just running it through the back there it's a little light strip of something in the distance there but it's between the distant hills and cliffs and this foreground stuff so I'm going to leave that like that and I'm going to be a little patient now what I do want to do is put in a little bit of a wash of 
cobalt just over this area here, if I can get away with it. Just wanted it a little bluer, more recession as that settles. That should be fine. Itching to get into this part, but I've got to wait. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to add some um, horizontal lines into the sand, give me some direction and movement in the sand. For that, I'm going to use a fairly thick rigger. And I'm going to use some cobalt and some of the sienna to make a fairly dirty bluish gray, green, something, <laughs> whatever you want to call that. Maybe tap a little bit of red into that too. So it's more suggestive and I'm just going to actually test it first. Always prudent to just check. And I'm going to put a little bit more sienna into that. I'm just going to suggest some lines that uh, add a bit more interest into the wetness and the sand. Just builds up a little bit more than just a flat plane. And what I might just do is allow that to soften and let it bleed down to this area here. So I can come off the end of the picture plane like so. Go back into the other mix and just finish off this area. A little bit of wet sand on the edge where this water has penetrated and left its mark. I think that won't go amiss. A bit more raw sienna into that. There's not an awful lot of sort of definition in here uh, other than a few reflections which I've attended to early on. That's quite a nice warm colour in the bottom of the sand there. Take that off to there too and allow that to flood out. Come back to a slightly larger round brush. Just allow some of these edges to soften and mingle. Like so. And maybe even come in with some of that uh, blue that I used before. I'm just going to clean off one of these trays and come in with some cobalt and a little bit of the ultramarine violet not too much test it again really and truly and then just suggest some warmer ripples that could be a little bit too much I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the ultramarine let it run around the edge and a few marks through the reflections and just soften and take that on through this area too and on up to where the water disappears off the end. It hasn't got to be much, but just give, lifts and gives a slightly different 
uh, appearance here and there. And that works. Well, I'm just going to put a little bit into this reflection here because this is a reflection, it's not a different subject area. So I just want that blue to run on as though it's making, having some effect where there's a little ripple in the sand, one bit's reflecting this and the other bit's reflecting the sky. Okay, I think we got away with that. Slightly hard edge here, which I could try and soften because I think it shouldn't be that hard. So while the paper is a little damp, just soften out. Probably a little too late, really, if honest. So what I might just do is a repair and just take a more pigment in and take it all the way through and lose that harshness. There you go. I don't think that's going to be a problem. If it is, we'll just take some action through there. But I think it would be fine. So now I'm going to come in with some um, sepia. I'm just going to gently, carefully work over some of these rock areas one more time. And then I want to put in this hill. I think we're dry enough to go for that now. So I'm going to put some uh, indigo and some violet and the ultramarine together. And maybe a tap of lemon yellow, very small amount, just to take it away from the purple, neutralize some of that purple. And carefully, very carefully, take it in over my other structure here and let it come down and into the background. Careful as it comes round the structure, you don't want to lose any of that. And square the top of that off. And there we go. There's a slight more lemon look to the end of that hill. So I'm going to put that in. But I'm going to leave that little bit of light, as I said, through here. I'm not quite sure what it's made of or what there is there, but I'm just going to suggest that there's other things there as well. Okay. I think I need to make it a little more I don't know, craggy looking at the top. I'm just going to look at that again and see where my pencil lines were. So I think that works quite well. I'm trying to wet some of this paint up, which stained over from the other one. We can still address that later on, it's not a big deal. And put a little bit more indigo together and a bit more of the ultramarine and uh, some further lemon. Don't want to make it too green, so you've got to be a bit careful of that. But just come in with some stronger pigment off the top of there.
just check that drawing as the type of comes into the side there, that's fine. <clears throat> I think it could go even a little higher than this, so we're going to give that a, a certain edge and a platform there, like a hat, and let that come down through. Okay, that's probably more accurate to the, the uh, idea. And I'm going to just add in some a little bit more violet over the top just to diffuse some of the green I'll go too mad with it one can always do too much and regret it and now I'm going to put in a very dirty this this purpley green color will now mix with the sienna and give me the darker shades that I need to suggest uh, this side of this hill as it comes down maybe a little bit more the sienna in there would work too not too wet because this is sort of scratchy and random marks that are on the face of this hillside And it's quite dark in there, but got to be careful I get too close to touch that and break that blue out, I will regret the, the decision. This already bleeding through there. It's not a big problem but it, if avoidable then avoid it. A little bit of umber in some of these, a little bit of um, sepia into the base. Maybe a little bit up into here to give some other structure. Okay, now for a bit of shadow work. So I'm going in with some sepia, a bit of the red to warm that sepia up even further. And I've got to wait for that one, but I can still get on and do this one. This, uh, whatever it is, I'm thinking it's a pill box. I don't know for sure. A pill box, for those who don't know, was a gunnery emplacement that was. Um, posted against the German advances and potential sea attack during the Second World War. So many of them uh, have been lost, but there are a good number still in existence around the coastline and inside on uh, large rivers where they could be navigable by uh, um, enemy forces. So this is one, I'm sure that's what it is. But as I say, I can't be absolutely sure. And I will suggest a few of these waves in here. For that, I'm going to be using some of this lemon and make this greenish with the uh, cobalt. And then I want to put in a bit of the orange just to warm that green through and corrupt it somewhat. And then I'm going to make a much more fluid state so it's a much paler mark and I'm just going to look and suggest a few sort of marks that suggest the waves
maybe a little more cobalt as they disappear out. To soften some of the marks, as you can see me doing here. Just some slight watery variations. Doesn't need too much more than that really. You can overdo it. There's a very fine line between not enough and just way too much. Now I'm going to look at the darker values. I'm using some of this other sort of greyish paint, maybe add a bit more blue to it. Just checking what I've got to do with it. And hopefully this will be dry enough to suggest some darker grassy patches on the hills. And that will help disguise some of these other marks that have been found their way in through um, previous layers of paint. Some of these grassy areas that attach themselves and grow up the chalk faces are from the bottom as much as they are from the top. That's worth bearing in mind. Now, one thing I might just do is dampen this brush. This is a, a nice brush. And what it basically is, is a very flat, but quite stiff bristle. And it's a great brush for just going in and with the dampness within it, just starting to lift some of that pigment away from the water. Like that. Don't go too mad again. It's just suggestive. It can just give enough variation. I'll leave it at that. Now all that remains for me to do is to just go in here and do a little bit of work on there. I'm going to mix up the colour with some mainly browns, some uh, sepia and some um, burnt sienna, some raw sienna. And if I need to, I've got a, a little bit of indigo. I can just tap some into the side there. There's an awful lot of structures in here that I'm not sure whether it's just bits of metal or old rocks or whatever it is. I can't see from this distance, so I'm just going to sort of tap them in and suggest a few bits and pieces. Again, I'm using the rigger, it's got a nice point. Uh, you can do this with other brushes too, it doesn't have to be a rigger. Almost tapping and drawing with it, really. A 
bit more pure and uh, sepia into that. Using some of these lighter phases around here to put the darks suggests another layer of, of information and foreground that suggests a greater degree of depth within the rocks and the boulders that you can see. Maybe one or two into the water from here. One last little bit, I think, just into the base of these rocks through here. I think that works. Okay, so I think I'm done. I'm just going to put a signature on the There we go. Alright, so I've enjoyed painting this. It um, showed up a few challenges that uh, were quite interesting. In fact, I've just seen something else that might well be worth just playing about with. And this often happens. You see something after you signed it and you think, oh, okay, just do that. But you've got to be careful because you can't just do that and just wreck it at the same time. But I think this could do with a little bit of coolness value into some of these marks here just to suggest a little bit more I think that's what it just I looked at it just now and I wasn't too sure but I think it does need to have just that little bit more in there okay that just gives that a bit more strength now do I need to bring anything in here I'm not sure see this is where you've got to be careful because at this stage you are very close to just overdoing the whole thing and but I just really feel that I want a little bit more depth as this hill comes down in here and I hope I haven't done too much I'm sure I haven't but it's always that worry I think that just gives that nice area there that just throws off that lead edge to, the, to this nearest uh, cliff. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, I've enjoyed doing it for you. And if you've got something from this, um, yeah, maybe you would put a nice like at the end of the video. That would be fantastic. And indeed, if you've got any comments to make, please put those too. And at the same time, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I am trying to grow the audience so that I know that people are enjoying the content that I'm putting out there. They're getting something from it. And if you subscribe to that channel then, or to my channel, then I know that um, you are getting something from it. And indeed, um, you know, it, it's growing the audience. So yeah, please subscribe if you're not. That'll be fantastic. I thank you for that. Comment and like. So until the next time, I'll catch you all soon and uh, see you in the next video. Happy painting and bye-bye for now.